what is up everybody welcome back to the bucks franchise we are coming off of a huge super bowl loss a lot of huge one i mean it was a pretty it was an amazing game to watch but we ended up on the short end of the stick and we now are in another off season so we are still in super bowl week i'm just picking up right where i left off after the super bowl and for those of you who have not witnessed, you know, the Super Bowl game, I highly suggest you go back and watch the video because even despite the loss, it was actually a really fun game to watch and, and to call. It was it was an amazing game. It came down to, of course, Justin Tucker and his stupid, stupid, powerful uh, leg. They made like a 60 yarder to win it in OT. It was an incredible game, right? So if you haven't seen it, I, I suggest you go and check it out. Today, however, we are going into the offseason. And I got to be honest, guys, I don't know what the future holds for this franchise right now. I don't. I, I understand that, you know, this this franchise is not being closed off or is not anywhere near a, a closure right now. And part of that is, you know, the, the cycle. Part of that is also my own problems that I faced for a couple of months there with my PC issue. So be between those two things, like I, I just... I'm not saying that I'm going to never do Bucks videos again because I, I want to continue the story and I will throughout the summer, but I, I have to be honest, man, I am really excited for the NCAA to drop in a few days and I plan on going hard in the content on that because that's a game that not only is new to me and everybody here that's watching, I've never was really a big college football guy and it, I sort of became a college football guy and like started like appreciating it more after NCAA 14 has already run its course and I just never got into the wave of going back and playing. I just, I'm not a big fan of doing that. So I, I'm just telling you guys right now, NCAA football is going to be like the, the main content on this channel, at, at least for a little bit. Who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll play and I'll be like, you know what? This just isn't for me, but I just don't see that being the case. Everything I'm seeing looks amazing. I, I want to do a dynasty. I want to do a road to glory. I want to do tip videos for the game to help you guys out as I learn things and deep dive it. Um, and then, of course, we have Madden 25 coming in just a, a little over a month, if not if not even that. I don't even, I don't even know when the date is. All I know is it's it's happening fast. And I got to be honest. I mean, the the, the, <laughs> the franchise videos, guys. I know I know there's a core group of you guys that really love the content, and I really appreciate you guys coming through all the time watching the Bucks franchise. But they're they're not really doing anything they're not really helping a whole lot i mean it, it seems that a lot of people are just over it uh, whether that's madden 24 whether that's my franchise in general whether that's you know just the time of year madden is sort of dead right now it always is and now adding in the fact that a game we've all been anticipating for a decade is coming out it's just it's just pushing content away from madden 24 that much quicker and that much more so i'm not trying to upset anybody I just I got to do what's best for for me and for the channel, of course, and for what I want to do, because I, I want to, you know, be happy and, and be making content. So just just a fair warning. OK, I, I plan on doing a lot of NCAA content when it comes out. Will that always be the case? I don't know. I have to play the game first to find out. But for now, we got the Bucks franchise. We have another offseason, my favorite time of the year, unless we're winning a Super Bowl, which obviously didn't happen. So let's get right into it. I've done enough yapping, I think. First thing on the docket. The retirements from this season. So Keenan Allen decided to hang it up. He finished his crew with the Texans. John Feliciano, DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Pierce, Mitch Morse, Quandre Diggs, Brandon Sheriff, Tyron Smith, Aaron Donald, Eric Kendricks, Garrett Bowles, Aaron Rodgers, Graham Gano, Darren Waller, Andrew Norwell, Lane Johnson. A lot of linemen, it looks like. Fletcher Cox, Bobby Wagner. Oh, William, William Golston finally decided to hang it up. I mean, I wasn't going to re-sign him anyway, as I told you guys that earlier. But now I can't even go back on that. I can't even decide to sign him later. Like, he's done. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad we got to have him on the team for the last few seasons. He was a very special rotational player for us, in my opinion. Um, Sterling Shepard. Robert Tanyan hangs it up after eight years. Wow, okay, and that appears to be a majority of the big name players. Cordell Patterson hangs it up, Jamie Collins. Yeah, all right, and that's all of the retirements. One thing that happened that I was not expecting is our coordinator left. <laughs> our offensive coordinator left. Let's find out where he went. So Bob Bates, our former offensive coordinator, is now the head coach of the New England Patriots. 
Hey, I mean, he got a better job offer. I can't be mad at him for that. He went off and, and got his got a new job. So now we are on the market for a new offensive coordinator and maybe even a new offense altogether. Let's see who is available right now in the offensive coordinator category. We have Jamie Rodriguez. He runs the Raiders playbook. Ryan Warner running the Carolina playbook. Nick Gregory running the Detroit Lions playbook. Oh, that's sort of interesting. Gus Frazier, who runs the Jacksonville playbook. Grant McDonald, who also runs the Dallas playbook, so we could bring him on. Will Cunningham, who is running the West Coast playbook. Okay, no, thank you. Nathaniel Douglas running the Rams playbook. So those are all of our options. I don't want to go too far away from what we've been doing. Ah, uh, the West Coast spread, we do not have, I mean, Tyler Chambers is a decent quarterback, but he's not a scrambling quarterback, even though he does have the ability to scramble. But I really don't want to go to the West Coast spread. And I've used the Rams playbook and in CPU, it is utterly trash. It really is. It, it might be cool to use like usering, uh, but in, in CPU play that and the Vikings book, they're both sort of trash. They just don't work. I think that's why the that's why the Vikings and Rams like always suck in franchises. If you've noticed that, it's just the books suck. It, it there's no other way to put it. The Cowboys have a very good book. That's why I think we were able to have a good offense. Um, Jacksonville, not so much. Um, Detroit, nah, not really. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a little. I think I'm gonna have to go at Grant McDonald. And literally everybody available in the coordinator pool is power running. <laughs> like the only other one was one person that had outside running, and I'm not even an outside running type of, of guy. Like I usually I like to see the inside runs. So we're gonna go with power running. And I think what we're gonna do is because QB Guru is very important, so we are going to make sure we get this accurately done. Throw on run, throw under pressure, break sack, play action. Speed, throw power. I feel like it was really helping Ch Tyler Chambers with having the accuracy. So we're just going to go back and replace that and get that back to where they were. All right. So, and then we'll just get, um, let's go. We'll do one over. Oh, we can't even. Holy cow. That's really expensive for juke moves. So then we're gonna go with boost short accuracy as the last one. There we go, back in action with our offensive coordinator. And before we get started, we have to take a look at the uh, the rest of the team to see where everybody is at, right? Did we lose any development traits with people? Um, did somebody you know, gain a development trait, those kind of things. So where we're at right now is Taylor Wharton is a superstar X Factor, Chris Godwin is superstar. Um, Nathan Gibbons also has star development. We have Rashad White and Taquan Samuel both with star and then Rashad Barr as superstar. I just feel like it should be Rashad Barr's time. And even though we are running power run with our offensive coordinator like specialty, he's still running the Dallas playbook, which is the same book we were running last year. Chambers, of course, is superstar thanks to the increase in dev trait we received from him earlier in the uh, earlier in the season with our weekly training. Uh, Tristan Wirfs as superstar, Cody Mauk at left guard is a star, and everybody else. Well, Alec Patterson is star. Um, so I would like to get him on the field at this point sometime too. Not sure if I want to move on from Dolman though. I like having Dolman, but it could be somebody like Hainsey, you know? Uh, he's 28 now. He's normal development. He's 76. It would be smart for us to get our future starter in the in the arena. And I feel like Alec Patterson could be both a guard or a center. He's 6'4", 315. Ratings are pretty even keel across the board, except there's a, a pretty big disparity in his pass block power. So that should actually help him with our new offensive coordinator. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of where I'm at with, with him. Like I would like to get him on the field. Plus he's got 80 acceleration, which could come in really handy with his guard for pulling and whatnot. So. I think what we're going to do is we're going to move him to right guard and we're going to try and see if we can find a trade partner for Hainsey um, just to get something back, even if it's like a late round pick. And moving him over there actually brings him up to a 76, which means that he's the same overall as Robert Hainsey is already. So I think it's a good move. 
So we'll we'll look at the trades later, but for now, Hainsey and Rashad White are two culprits on this offense, and I'm gonna look to see if we can move on from this offseason. And then on defense, Vita Vea is down to a star, Kalijah Kansi at star, Timmy Baker at superstar, thanks again to the mini camps or to the mini tra blah, 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 the, the training camp games. I know, I know words. But everybody else, man, is pretty much just star. I mean, yeah, of course we have Frankie Luva, who's X Factor, and oh my god, Jermaine Johnson's an X Factor? When did that happen? That happened after the Super Bowl. So now Jermaine Johnson, after a stunning finish to the season, moves up to Superstar X Factor. Frankie Luvu is Superstar X Factor. Devin White is down to star, but we still have Anthony Moore as an X Factor as well. So this defense has some quality, quality pieces. We just need to add some beef, I think, down here, right? Um, I, Justin Jones is going to be moving on. We're not going to be bringing him back, if I remember correctly. We have Javon Dexter as sort of a, a futures project, rotational player. I feel like where our biggest need right now is depth along the defensive end position and some competition because while I like Kalaja Kansi, he just has not performed. He hasn't even been a, a figure in the game for the most part. It's usually everybody else that's performing. Timmy Baker, even though he got off to a slow start, sort of came around towards the end of the season from his new position as defensive end. So with that, I, I just feel like maybe this could be a good ticket for us to move on from a player and get something good back for them, as much as I like Kalijah Kansi. And he's gonna be coming up on the final year of his contract, which means that this would be a good year. And he has no interest, apparently, with coming back to us. He wants a big market, a highest offer, and he wants to be a scheme fit. And I guess we're just not that for him. In the secondary, Najee Flowers is up to a 75. We have Ryan Neal still at an 84, so he will hold down the fort there. And we still have Derek Green as well. So don't so keep that in mind. Derek Green is still on the roster. He just, you know, after his rookie season fell flat, he got replaced. You know, he ended up being moved up to an actual edge rusher position. And then Jermaine Johnson, who we weren't sure of at the beginning of the season, ended up playing lights out, securing that spot, securing a new contract. And now look at him here. Superstar X Factor, ready to roll on to the next season. We still have our two uh, awesome corners in Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis, along with Paul Bronson in the slot. Duke Shelley will be moving on as well. So it's going to be down to Christian Isian. And then um, what's dude's name behind him? I know it. I don't know it. Crap. You guys know who I'm talking about, though. The the guy we, we drafted, or no, I think I just picked him up in free agency last year. Undrafted rookie. Bottom line is, we know that this team is going to look a little different. And speaking of Kalaja Kansi, it's time for his fifth year option. And regardless of how much I like him, I know he's doing a much better job in the real world, but in this game mode, he has just never really caught on. And he is definitely not worth $15 million for one season. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna reject his offer. He's gonna have one season left with us if I don't trade him. Uh, Zonovan Knight, I'm not franchise taking Zonovan Knight. <laughs> Uh, not franchising Kate Otten, Duke Shelley, Josh Jones, Justin Jones. Yeah, there's just really nobody here worth worth uh, doing that for. So all these players, all these role players we've come to know are going to be gone. And let's see, what is available to us right now if we were to trade Rashad White? The Bears are offering Jesse Baia, Baiati, Jesse Baiati, a right tackle, which is something that's definitely needed, a young right tackle which is a little strange. Uh, 75 overall, I don't see that being a realistic trade. <laughs> um, a lot of corners being offered up, and that's all. So the upfront trades are not something we would look at. We would have to look and see what team fits for Rashad White. Oh, wow, so the Bears really don't have a running back. I, now it makes sense. And so now let's see what the right tackle position is. Oh, so they overdrafted. Okay, so that, that's why that happened. They overdrafted. Yeah. They have a bunch of, of linemen, and they have nothing to, to use them for. Because Darnell Wright is not going anywhere. And, yeah. Okay, well, let's just see. What is what is Bayadi? I think it's Bayadi. I could be very wrong with this. Let's see what he looks like. 6'6", 337, 23 years old. 75 overall with power. 
um very lackluster in pass block finesse and run block finesse so that's something we'd have to work on immediately with him but he does have 93 impact blocking to go along with 93 strength that is not a very bad a uh, couple of stats to have he's got good injury and stamina toughness could be a little bit better but with the injury being high it at least lessens his chance of being injured up front they're also offering up a 2028 fourth round pick i don't like that yeah, I don't like that at all. Let's let's try to counter off for that. So let's say right here, what do we have for draft picks? We have one, two, three, four, four, five, five, seven, seven. We have a lot of later round picks. What if we tried to where do they pick in the first? Because we really don't need a bunch of late round or later late round picks, right? Like we have a good surplus of them. What if we were to try to do something different? All right, so this is what I did, okay? I put this trade package together. I was going to throw in like a late round pick, but I said, you know what? Why even bother? We have an extra fourth and an extra fifth. What if we just take Rashad White in our round one pick, and then we get Jesse Biotti. I'm going to look his name up after this video, and I'm probably going to be horribly wrong. And their round one pick. So we're essentially swapping round one picks. They're getting a bona fide running back, which they don't have one for their backup right tackle. And we're also giving them a fourth and a fifth round pick to add for, they need more in this draft than what we do, right? Our trade is a 400 point difference for us, which means that we're giving up 400 points of value more than they are. And it says that we are at a 15% disadvantage with this trade. And while I would like to have a fair trade, I also know that, you know, I feel that when you're trying to trade up in the draft, you have to overpay. And that's what we're doing here, right? Because I feel like even without, we could have gotten another pick or two from them and had even out. But this way, you know, I, I think it's fair. So I'm going to go ahead and see if they'll take this trade. They might not even take this trade for all I know. Yeah, they won't. So maybe this is just not a trade that we're going to be able to make happen, you know? I just don't know if I want to give up that much for this situation. But however, I do know that I'm not taking a, a, a fourth round pick like two years from now. That's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, what if we did a second round pick swap? We'd be moving up 13 spots. And then they also give us a fifth round pick. So second round pick swap, player swap, and they give us a fifth round pick. I, I feel like that's not even a lot, you know? But if they're playing hardball, we, we at least get a, an earlier second round pick out of this scenario. Let's see. Oh, that's very close. Very close indeed. Okay. Okay. So let's do six round pick. They've got to take this. There's no way they don't take this. And I'm okay with it. We're moving up in the second round. We're getting a, a good potential future left right tackle for us. And we're getting a sixth round pick for giving up Rashad White. And there we go. We swap our second round pick. So now we're going to be picking 50th instead of 63rd. And we pick up a sixth round pick as well this season. All right. So after going through everything, I just, I didn't find anything that I really was interested in right none of the teams were willing to give up somebody that i wanted that i would have been interested in for a trade especially considering the impact it would have been another two million for dolman and it would have been like five million for hainsey so i'm just going to keep them you know we'll just have strong depth on the offensive line in case of injury and we'll we'll go from there there was no tight ends there was no running backs there was just there really wasn't anybody that just jumped off the screen to me like, I need this guy or I want this guy. So we're just going to leave it as is. Patterson is still going to take over the right guard spot as the starter. Dolman will stay as the starter at center. And then that'll be our offensive line now with Bayati. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to look this up right now. All right. So I just looked it up and apparently it is uh, believed to be of, of originally Filipino descent, but more dense in like Portugal and you know, obviously, well, now America, because, you know, everybody lives in America, every walk of life. So, but it's Biote. So I was actually technically sort of right. So Biote is going to take over as our right tackle. And he is now somebody that we can look at to the future, potentially, as a 23-year-old uh, star development player as a 75. So I'm excited there. 
we sort of patch up this offensive line quickly. We had a lot of it in-house. One trade got us taken care of with that. So now we just have to worry on offense about finding another running back and then a, a second tight end and then maybe a backup quarterback, right? Outside of that, the offense is sort of done for now. And now we can shift our focus to trying to find some better defenders for the edges here on defensive ends. And now we get to look at what we could potentially get for Kalaja Kansi. Listen, I know Kansi is an up and coming star for Tampa Bay in real life. I know we had a really good season. He's part of that nucleus that they're building in Tampa. But here on this channel, in this world that we're in, he just hasn't lived up to expectations. Now, could he potentially come out and play phenomenal just like Jermaine Johnson did that could be the case but could we potentially find a, another hole to fill with us going heavily on defense this offseason hopefully to like patch up the rest of the team and then all we really need to do is find ourselves another right right end so the first thing I see right off the bat is the Cardinals offering up Will Heron who is a their backup tight end He's a 75 overall star development. He's 23 years old. They would also offer up a seventh and a, a seventh this year and a seventh next year. Colts, Darius Slayton with a third um, two years from now and a sixth two years from now. I'm not really a fan of that. Uh, Lance Shelby, a wide receiver. Not, no, don't need that. Joe Tipman, a younger center. That's not a bad option to be quite honest with you, but is it worth it when we have Dolman? And to me, it just doesn't make that much of a difference. Wes Watkins, once again, not too concerned with that. Matt Taylor. Now that could be... Okay, Devontae, K we're getting some corners now. Okay, I'm liking that. Let's see, and then Kyler Gordon. So out of, I mean, Gordon is a, a decent player, but at 26 already, I'm not too focused on him. I'm really interested to see what Matt Taylor could offer. So let's see what he's looking like. So he's 6'2", 209, 23 years old, zone defender, 92 speed, 92 acceleration, 83 zone. He can't cover to, to save himself in man coverage. So that'd be something we'd have to work on right away. Injury is not the worst. Stamina is very good. Toughness is not the worst. Hit power is decent. Um, tackling is actually pretty good. Wow, is this guy a safety? <laughs> I mean, he needs better play recognition, but I'm just like 70 tackle for a corner is actually pretty decent. Um, hit power 76. Oh, wow. I am very tempted to take this offer. The question would be, would I rather have Matt Taylor or would I rather have Will Heron at this point? Because those are the two that really jump off the screen to me. All right, so Will Heron is 6'6", 268, 23 years old. 82 speed, 83 catching, 83 XL. Not very good at route running, but he's got 75 short route running, which isn't too bad. Um, He's not a very strong blocker. Injuries mildly above average. Stamina is very good. Toughness is a little on the low side. So that would be a little bit of a concern for me. I mean, he's 23, he's star development. I, I highly doubt he would keep that if he comes over to us. But I mean, that is actually not a bad option. That would fill our tight end position, which essentially is one of the last positions on offense we have to worry about. Um, Yeah, I feel like that might be a good move. Between him and Matt Taylor, I'm not sure which one I want. The only problem I have with Taylor is he's very bad at man coverage. Like, very bad. 62 man coverage, if I remember correctly. Maybe 63. I mean, that's that's really bad. And we play man defense. You know, we, we run Miami's defense, and they, they tend to lean more in the man coverage range. I think I'm going to have to take this trade. I'm just going to see if I can get them to offer a little bit better of a pick. All right, so Kalaja Kansi is now an Arizona Cardinal. We have filled our spot with our backup tight end. We've also gained a fifth round pick. And now the team is almost coming together completely. There was a reason I did all of that stuff before even really looking at free agency because free agency is dead. 
but there's like nobody out here like not a soul you know what i mean um we do have some potential players we could bring in at defensive end to fight for a spot um not too many but there are players here there are some guys here so maybe we can find a corner let's see um i do need to make sure he's young enough though because we have we have veterans in place so if i bring a guy in he's got to be somebody that we can still build up and right now the youngest i'm seeing is 25 which un unfortunately is just not going to cut it and i'm not saying i expect anything younger it's just that's what i'm going to be looking for if i'm if i'm bringing somebody in you know oh wait who's this guy all right so darius brown is 6'3 202 he's got star development 24 years old stone corner oh my god his man coverage is even worse jesus lord oh man um at least in this scenario like we're not trading for him we're not giving up assets for him i might offer him something you know just to just to see if we land him i don't think we will because his interest was very very low but gotta take a shot sometimes and we're definitely not gonna even be signing five players so i'm just gonna offer him something here um offer him a player friendly so a two-year deal and that actually ended up being his favorite offer so there's our first guy that we'll look at and that's not a bad player you know not a bad player at all now let's see what we can do here for the defense oh wait a minute isn't this the dude that was like destroying us i think this was Odigazua? Odigazua? I think he was. There was a guy that was just destroying us when we played them. I think he played for Dallas at one point. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, it was this guy. I remember this guy. He made quite a few nice plays. He was playing D-tackle in their 4-3. I went ahead and moved him to the right end when he signed with Indianapolis because they ran a 3-4 to fit their system. Um... And he had consistency at least not the most production but he did have consistency he didn't fall off a cliff in indianapolis um okay that's actually not a bad option here he's got really high ski like interest in us too let's offer him a contract here are you serious we're already negative what the flip okay we have to make some room to make some room on this roster here all right, let's just see what we can do to adjust some salaries. Maybe we can find a, a restructure. Um, we do have a lot more estimated cap space next year. And we could do a restructure with Luvu pushing 3 million of it to next season, which would free up 3 million this season, which isn't a bad deal either. Let's go ahead and let's do that. Yeah, there we go. We restructured him. And now I'm also gonna restructure Antoine Winfield. Since we have more money next season, like look at the cap space. It says 159 million after because we don't have a lot of players. Like we're gonna have a lot of decisions to make. But we're gonna have a lot of money to do it with. So we're gonna push some of his money back as well, and that should give us enough play room to make some moves. Hopefully. So yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna offer Os Osa Odigazua. Let's see what neutral does. That already give us the best offer. We're the only one offering him. Okay, that's perfect. Just a, a quick two-year deal. He's 28. We know he won't be regressing before his contract is up. And he really wants to play here, it looks like. And I just looked his name up. So it's Odigi Zua. I'm just not seeing anything that's really jumping off. So I think we're just going to offer the three that I have. And then these are the guys that I have offered contracts to. It's, of course, Odigi Zua, Darius Brown, and then Kari Rhodes. So like two... Just young guys that I want to try and see if we can land and build up a little bit. And then, of course, Odigi Zua to become our new defensive end, depending on how the draft goes. All right, and there we go. So we got all three. Ida wasn't happy to be here. Well, guess what, dude? You're coming to Florida. Stop complaining. All right? Just stop it. So I think that this was a quality offseason so far. Was it exciting? They never really are. Not with me, anyway. I'm sorry, guys. I know I'm not, I'm not a fancy, you know, create crazy drama stories with my my rosters you know i get it i'm not that guy I, I do things more realistically in my book compared to what the game and nothing against people that do it that way right i it's all in the game like you can play however you want like it's just not the way i like to do it 
So I, I know that these aren't always very exciting. I, I always look more forward to the draft than anything else. But let's just take a look at the team now. Um, I think we've done some good stuff. We have a potential future QB2 for us in Kari Rhodes. Um, we need to find a running back. Our receiving core is very good, I think. We have some really good young talent here with Nathan Givens and Nick Smith, Je uh, Jeff Benson and JoJo Dawkins, even Nicholas Joy. We have a lot of guys we can build up behind these guys. Um, tight ends were set there. We have Blake and Heron now, which I, I'm happy with. Durham is also not a bad third option, so he'll actually probably make the active roster finally. Um, our line, I think, is in, intact and very good. We have Patterson as a guard. He's going to start there, but we'll have Hainsey as sort of the in-between between center and guard. We have Jesse Biotti as our right tackle, so that is pretty much solved for now. Defensively, Timmy Baker still here. We now have Odigi Zua, and then we have Vitavea in the middle. Our linebacking core has been intact for a long time, and we don't have a lot of clarity on the future of the position, but we do have some potential good players on the horizon here. And we still have an, a, a draft to do, right? Our, our corners or our safeties are good, I mean. So I'm excited, man. I think this is good. So now it's time for us to focus more on the draft. All right, so we're not going to be picking very high, right? So we are pretty much going all the way down here um to you know probably in this range somewhere like between 25 and beyond because one of the one or two of these guys might fall to us we have to start targeting some players here and we know what we need we want to try and find some stuff for the defensive ends is there going to be a guy that is worthy of you know our pick later on um in the late in the first round i would like to see there is calvin castle I can't remember if this is a guy that's going to be going early or not. I have to go back and check the mock draft. Let me do that now. I think he was going way earlier than I anticipated, if I remember correctly. Let's see. Actually, they don't have him going. They have us taking Keelan Jackson, and that's not even a very bad option for us either. But Calvin Castle is a guy that I could definitely see bringing on. We do know 50% of him right now. 6'4", 307. He's 22 years old. He has decent physical ratings. Um, he's very strong. Good impact and play rec. Bs for awareness and power moves and stamina. I think that it would be worthwhile for us to do another... Um, to, to put him as our focus player to get him to 90%. Because we might end up finding out that he's really good or really bad. At least that way we know. Yes, Deion Jones was one that I, I remember I could look at because he was projected to go later, but was actually around one to two talent, which is right in our area of what we're looking for. And he has some really good ratings. The only thing is his injury. Is his injury going to be like a 78? I don't remember seeing a story on him about a bad injury, so I, I'm not too concerned with him having like 40 something injury like we've seen with some other players. Um, and then a lot of the other players are just not scheme fits, right? I might do one on Keelan Jackson because you can never have too many good guards. And who knows what's going to happen with Cody Mauk. We've had a few injury issues with him in the past. Um, we could also look at corners, right? We do have some corners here that I could unlock more of. And I think... Who was it that was all going? Let's look at the corners here to see who's all going in the mock drafts right now. Um, so obviously Alex Cummings and Amari Moore. That's no surprise there. Um, Tyron Kelly. Ashawn Haynes. Matt Cunningham. Cornell Skinner. So Cummings, Moore, Haynes, Kelly, and Skinner, and Cunningham. Okay, those six guys. Okay, a lot of guys. So all of these guys are technically going to be gone. We could be looking at a guy like Percy Calloway, uh, Jamichael Arrington. Um, I just can't remember if these guys are... He's got A zone. We need somebody that's his balanced. We need somebody that's got good man. Oh, right here. Will Jones. He's got A man and B zone. I'm going to I'm gonna put him as, as one of them for sure. Unlock that. And then maybe a guy... And see where his talent is. If his talent is round one to two, he definitely is going to be somebody I'm going to look at with our first... Our, our first round pick 
Um, so we'll do Will Jones for sure. I want to do Calvin Castle on another one, and then maybe just Keelan Jackson and call it a day. And then looking at, like, say, running backs, there are so many guys down here. I haven't even bothered looking at them, but there might be somebody down here that we could take later just to, to fill a spot. Um, Chris Henley here, day three guy. He's got a couple of A's. He's an elusive back, but he's got a bigger build. He's 6'1", 224. He's got good physicals, honestly. First in vertical, broad, and two cone, three cone, sorry. Um, not the best in the 20 yard, seventh in 40 yard dash, sixth in bench press. A's in break tackle and carrying. B ball carrier vision, B trucking, B stiff arm. So I think even, they say he's elusive, but I feel like he's gonna end up being a more like one of those balanced backs that is sort of like a, high 70s low 80s for all like juke spin trucking stiff arm kind of guy and then before we get to the uh private workouts i just want to go through this one more time to make sure that nothing crazy has changed so i don't go wasting a upgrade on a player that's going to be long gone um it looks as if most of the players are going to be going the same yeah okay so not a, really much of a difference there not at least the guys that i'm i'm looking at i don't even remember seeing a guard at all all right so let's go ahead and let's take a look at our private workouts here i know that we want to go with uh keelan jackson and then what did we have also here uh we had calvin castle and then will jones right will jones got will jones right here we already have him at 90 percent, so it's going to be pretty easy to get you know the rest of it unlocked he's got a man coverage which is big for our defense and honestly okay so the the, the only other player up to this point is amari moore that has as good or better man coverage with an a so that is sort of fits right in line with what we need so i think we're good we have our three players Let's go ahead and hit confirm Keelan Jackson, Calvin Castle, and Will Jones. Okay, so we made it to draft week, and now it's time for us to see what the private workouts uncovered with the players that we went ahead and um, we went and did the private workouts with, obviously. So let's go in there and check it out. First one is Keelan Jackson. We got him up to a 90%. Now let's see. We got, oh, okay. So a few more A's now. A awareness, A impact. A lead block, A pass block, A run block finesse, A to B and pass block finesse and stamina. And those are the only two we don't have unlocked. So this guy, this guy is going to be pretty damn good. His injury is a D, but it's better than an F. But I swear to God, 80% of the prospects have an F injury. So I'm I'm not, I'm not hating this at all right now. Damn, am I got to draft a guard in the first round? I mean, I know that we need other things, but we have pick 50 now so we won't be picking too far back we have so many other like picks that i could probably package together to move up and the other guy we were looking at here is uh calvin castle we have him up to a 90 as well and we know what the physicals are so he's got a's in play rec pursuit tackle and impact that's not bad injury d or f um block shedding is an a as well i didn't see that and then awareness for b and power moves and stamina so he's also gonna be a pretty decent player I feel like Jackson might be a little bit more well-rounded than him right now uh, in terms of like just comparing the two. But I, I mean, if he, I don't know, it's going to see where things fall, I guess. Like we have guys like Chad Loud, Ezekiel Jones, um, Deion Jones, who we know is a better player than what it says he is. So we could potentially, like if let's say we take Jackson and then, you know, Castle, goes or whatever before we get to pick next we could fall back to jones or uh a d tackle because we know what he is already and then let's see will jones will jones where is he oh he's round one okay well that changes things so he has a round two to three projection but he's round one talent okay and then we know, well, he's definitely got to get added to favorites there. All right. So we know that Andrew Quintana is going to probably go for us before us. We'll leave him there. Um, I think I want to move 
Keelan Jackson up here because we just we know more about him right now. And then I have to move Will Jones up here as well. Um, we know Deion Jones is going to be pretty good, so I'll, I'll just throw him right here. And then Calvin Castle, who I, I do believe is going to be good. I'm going to put him below Will Jones, though. Well, no, I'm going to put him above because he's projected to go early. He's projected to go rounds one to two. So ideal scenario here is Jackson falls to us, you know, and we decide to take a stab at him. It's late first round. And while our line is set, it's not over abundance either. Um, could, and then come back. I still think we'd have to make a move if we're going to get all three of these guys, though, because we have... I just don't see all three of these guys. I know Will Jones is later projected, but I don't see him lasting until our third round pick. So I'd almost have to make another move if I wanted to get all three of these guys. Or I'd have to decide one of these guys I just can't get. But we do have the option as well of falling back to Deion Jones, too. We know he's round one to two. We actually know more about him than we do Calvin Castle. Yes, he is a D tackle, but we know his talent is up there. And I, I do believe he could he could move over. He's got B for finesse moves. I mean, we could we could make him work out out on the outside as well. And he wouldn't have to start right away anyway. Uh, Gerard Greer is still somebody that I'm interested in, the center. But we really, I don't know. We have a lot of questions on the offensive line, but we also don't have that many of big questions, right? It's just a matter of do we want to upgrade or not. Will Jones right now is like priority number one almost for me. But I don't want to take him in the first round if we can get somebody first and then trade up for him or just wait and pray that he gets to us. Or maybe just make a, a small move, right, to jump up a few spots. All right, here we go. Round one, pick one. The Saints are on the board, our division rival. Let's go ahead and let's get to the next pick. They take Austin Josephson, their defensive end. That is right on par. Alex Cummings goes to the Commanders. Daniel Perkins goes to the Panthers. Amari Moore to the Broncos. Abdul Clayton to the Seahawks. Melvin Battle to the Cardinals. Demarius Langford, first quarterback off the board. Pick seven to the Raiders. Oh, second quarterback, Gordon Landry going to the Lions. Isaiah Starks, the first offensive lineman. No, wait. I think one of the other ones was left tackle. Well, first right tackle off the board. Ed, Eli Oliver, another right tackle. Connor McDonald, left end. Cole Randolph, outside linebacker. There goes Dominic Alexander. Yeah, we never had a chance at him. Pick 13. It's just We don't have the firepower to go up there and get him. Tyrone Kelly goes to the Dolphins. Quayshawn Haynes, the other corner, going to the Steelers. Trent Molden to the Bengals. Matt Cunningham to the Vikings. Cornell Skinner, so a run on corners here. Reed Stevens to the Packers. J.R. Parrish to the Titans. Old Dressler to the 49ers. There goes Andrew Quintana to the Cowboys, just as we anticipated. Dorian Winslow to the Bills. Greg Hendricks, another quarterback to the Chiefs? Well, that's a little ridiculous. Oh, and there goes Drew Barker, the right guard. He goes to the Colts. Alex Painter to the Eagles. Dan Short to the Giants, a quarterback. Martin Hicks to the Browns. Devin Widmer to the Chargers. Glenn McMullen to the Falcons. And that puts us on the board. So Keelan Jackson is the number one left guard. But we know he's probably going to go soon. Tyree Shelby could also go before him. Potentially. Um, at defensive end, Matthew Stork is in front of Calvin Castle right now. But we do have something there to potentially lead to not having him pick before us. Um, and then at corner, Will Jones is fifth. So we have some wiggle room here with Jones. The only one we don't have wiggle room with is Keelan Jackson. So if we want to make a move for, for Keelan Jackson, solidify the line, knowing that he's got all these A's, 
We can maybe make a trade if we have to, to move around the board a little bit in the second round or maybe the beginning of the third round. I want to make sure we get Will Jones. That's like priority number one A or one B after Keelan Jackson, I think here, because, you know, we have a lot of what ifs, 27, 28 year old guys that are, you know, haven't really gone too much farther past what they are. If we can bring a guy in like Keelan Jackson, even if he's a 74, 75, like uh, Patterson was, he can start after the season for one of these guys, and then we don't have to worry about it. So we're gonna make the most unentertaining pick, and we're gonna pick, and we are gonna take Elon Jackson with the number 31 overall pick. And he is hidden dev, awesome. Love getting hidden dev offensive linemen, they're hard enough to upgrade. And we have 94 strength, okay. 82 excel, that's awesome. Change of direction is pretty bad, but most linemen are. Uh, 75 speed, 72 agility. Okay, I'm, I'm liking it. And now we have round two, pick 18. And let's see what's going to happen here. So Russell Logan finishes out the first round to the Ravens. And then the Saints are back on the board, and they're going to go Eric Sandridge, a strong safety. Kevin jo oh, that scared the shit out of me, guys. Holy cow. I can't lie. I saw Jones and just immediately freaked out. Oh boy, okay. Chad, oh, and there goes Chad Loud, okay. All right, that's good. Castle's still on the board. Oh, another Jones. That one is Ezekiel Jones, D-tackle. Trayvon Jones, running back to the Seahawks. Sean McNair to the Cardinals. Matthew Stork to the Raiders. Tyler Dobson to the Lions. Cole Huffman to the Patriots. Okay, guys, we're getting close. Troy Coleman. Oh, another D tackle. Holy cow, they're going fast. Thomas Backus. Why the hell did the, the Texans just take a quarterback in the second round? I thought the first round was just where it was broken. D e. Abbott to the Jaguars. Cedric Wolf to the Jets. Callum Nicholson to the uh, Dolphins. Oh, there goes Gerard Greer. Oh, Gerard Greer, sorry. He goes to the Bengals. Irie Shelby, there was the other guard. Goes to the Bengals. And then Justin Sanders at quarterback going to the Vikings. And that brings us back on the board again. And this is where it's going to get uh, fun here. Because right now we have round two, pick 18. We also have round three, pick four. And round four, pick four. So, I like Calvin Castle. I think he fits us well. I also did like Deion Jones, who we know is still available. We have two guys that are around two to three projection, both with better talent than what is available right now. I feel like this could be, would be a better spot for Will Jones. That, that's just my opinion. I feel like this is the spot for Will Jones. We've made it to the second round. We'll get ahead of the curve on him. We know he's a round one talent. And if we don't take him and let's say one of these other guys ends up getting, you know, passed up for Will Jones, we're not going to have a chance of getting him at all. Calvin Castle is the one that we don't know everything about. We do know he's got good grades. It's not that he doesn't have good grades, but we know what some of these other guys are. And I feel like I, I just can't pass up Will Jones knowing he's round one talent. He's the only other corner outside of Amari, what's his name, from the, like, the top five that is an A-man cover corner. That's exactly what we need. I just got to take him. We're going to take Will Jones. So here we go, Will Jones. Round two, pick 18. And he is hidden dev. 92 speed, 94 excel, 92 change of direction, and 92 jumping. Definitely have to change his face. He's got a weird looking face, but we'll 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 fix that up later. A 6'1, 204, 22 years old. Marquise McCain, wide receiver. And holy shit, there goes Calvin Castle. Literally two picks later. Damn. Okay. Well, I made a good choice for myself. I, I, I wanted to do that because I didn't know what would happen. So that's, I have to live with that. 
Okay, so Calvin Castle going there. I I, I don't know why I, I thought he might last. But now it's got me wondering if I need to move, make a move if I want Jones or Goodson. Pro well, Jones in this scenario, because I know he's got the talent for it. Well, I mean, I guess let's just see if we can make a move up. Let's see if we can do a deal with like the 49ers or like the Cowboys or something like that. They do, but they have no cap room. Okay, well, that's that's just fantastic. Okay, well, let's just see if I can make a move with what we have. So they have round two, pick 53. We have round three, pick 68. I could offer that and fourth and a fifth. I don't think that's going to move the needle, though. I might have to offer up something even more. Maybe uh, another, like a seventh. Yeah, let's try our last seventh as well and see if all these picks together will get us to move up these, you know, 15 or 16 spots. 15. I don't know if they're going to go for it, though. No, they don't. Son of a biscuit. Okay. Who's the other teams? The Cowboys and Bills, I think. Cowboys and Bills. Okay, let's just see here. Do they need linemen? Cowboys, Bills. So if they need linemen, I can try and get a trade with them. Bills don't need interior linemen. Oh, they need a center. That could work. What do the 49ers need? Do they need a D tackle? Holy shit, it's their first option. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. I can't trade him a player either. Okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go past... We're going to go past the 49ers. And if for whatever reason they don't take <laughs> Deion Jones, I'm going to try to make a move with maybe the Bills or Cowboys, uh, I guess. Bills... We know the Bills need a, a center, and we have one that we could trade. And they go center. What the flip? They need a center. Okay. All right, let's see. Maybe we're in business here. Round two, pick 54. Round three, pick 68. So I would give them round four, pick 100. And in, in return, I'd get round four, pick 118. So we let them move up 18 spots here. And then they also get to move, they, they move back 15, no, 12 spots, no, 14 spots in the second round, and I give him Drew Dahlman for, for the exchange. I, I don't think that's a bad play. Let's just see if they take it. They do. There we go. Okay, now we're in business. We're in business. So we're on the clock now, and I'm just going to take Deion Jones and hope that I made the right choice here. Where is he? Deion Jones... We know he's round one to two talents. Let's see what he's got. Another hidden dev. There we go. 90 strength, 85 excel, 75 speed. That's not bad for a defensive end. I'm going to move him to defensive end too. 6'6", 309. That's not a bad build for a defensive end at all. That was a fun first uh, round and a half, two rounds. So I know I'm not moving up anymore. I don't know where the board's going to take us after this. So I'm going to go ahead and just simulate straight to round four, pick 21. All right, here we are, round four, pick 21. Um, let's see, what is available to us? We did mention Chris Henley before, there's the elusive back. Um, he is still available. He's a day three guy. Um, that could be a guy that we look at. There are a few other running backs though. Where is our next pick after this? Oh, we have back-to-back -back fourth round picks? Oh, well, that's cool. All right, perfect. Um. I don't really think there's anybody else that I'm really that interested in. The only one that's really on my board right now is Chris Henley. He's not even on my board. It's just somebody that we looked at before and we know that he's got, you know, some decent stuff and he could be that third running back for us. Yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff. His physicals second and 40 yard dash. Ow, that got better. Did it not? I really like this guy. A's. We know of a few A's and a few B's. Yeah, I, I feel like maybe I just take him here. I know he's day three, but there's not a lot of other positions that I'm really like gunning for right now. We got our D tackle or our defensive end, I should say. We got our uh, corner and we got a lineman. So yeah, let's go Chris Henley here. 
and he's hidden dev as well. Oh boy. All righty. 89 speed, 93 acceleration, 90 agility. So he's definitely going to be like a, a all around running back. I like that. That is awesome. I think I'm gonna just take this trade here from the Jaguars. It gives us three extra picks next year, all for just the fourth rounder this year. So I, yeah, I'm just gonna take this. Yeah, I think we're I think we're good. I don't think I need anybody else at this draft. Um, I'll see if there's one more trade down, and then take another peek. I guess I don't know. There's we got the guys that I was really interested in. So now it's more so just can I find you know some future picks and whatnot. And when I'm looking at these, I'm looking for next year. I don't want them this year because I already know that like I'm already struggling to find players to draft because I got the guys that I wanted. So I'm just going to go and see if I can find. Jesus, everything is this year. I don't want stuff for this year. Here we go. Houston Texans give us two fifth round picks next year and the year after for uh, this fifth round pick. So let's just let's just go ahead and take that. We luckily enough didn't need a lot of our picks to move around the board, which is why I had all those extra picks. I think I'm just gonna skip the rest of the draft. Whoever we pick, we pick, you know? All right, now it's time to see who's better at picking, me or the computer. I think the computer had like three or four picks that they did. Draft recap, time to check out what it is that we drafted. Okay. Well, we hit it out of the park on the first couple of picks. Holy cow. Man, I love I love I love when I get a good draft, man. Keelan Jackson ends up being an 81 overall. Okay, Keelan Jackson, 94 strength, 88 lead block, 92 impact blocking, 84 run block finesse. Got to get that run power up, but that'll that'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Entry ended up being an 85, so not bad for a D grade, honestly. I mean, that's that's not too bad. And then Will Jones ended up being a 78 overall. That's a pretty awesome find. So he has a he came in way more balanced than I anticipated. I thought he was gonna be good at man and then maybe like low 70s in zone, but he ends up coming in 78 zone. So he's already a well-rounded player, aside from a little bit of play recognition and maybe some awareness. 96 injury, 86 stamina, 85 toughness. Not too bad there. Okay, I'm I'm liking that. That's two really solid picks. And then Dion Jones ends up being a 75. 6'6", 309. And let's see. Okay, so he needs to work on his moves. But he comes in with 75 block shedding, 76 play recognition, which I think is very, very good. 90 strength, 83 tackle, 85 acceleration. Injury is a 76, though. Damn. Okay. That might come into factor down the line. We'll see. You know, that might end up being a situation where he doesn't stay healthy very often. And then Chris Henley, the running back we drafted, was also a hidden development. 75 overall elusive back. He's got... Yeah, just like I thought, balance across the board. High 70s in almost everything. Trucking, stiff arm, juke is a 76, spin 73, ball carrier 81. Just a, a sort of an all around running back. He's got 83 injury, 82 stamina, and 80 toughness. Okay, so not the best there either. Um, Donnell Sims, the guy I picked. Um, oh, I didn't pick him. The computer did, right? Did I pick him? I can't even remember. I don't think I did. But he ended up sucking. 66 overall. Frank Favors was drafted. Georgia wide receiver. And he was a 70. 6'6? Six, six? <laughs> He's 6'6? Six, six? With 95 acceleration? And 95 agility. And 95 chain. What in the hell did I just find? What is this guy? This guy's got 78 injury, 78 toughness. So already a concern for injuries. He's got 96 kick return, 99 juke move. I've never even seen a 99. 95 change of direction, 95 agility, 95 acceleration. And he's, he's freaking 6'6". 
Okay. And the CPU is not too bad at this stuff, I guess. And then we got Chris Lindholm, who's a 64, and another good wide receiver, Terrence Gregory. He's hidden development. <laughs> 90 speed, 93 excel, 90 agility. His release is absolutely trash. 64, my gosh. Um, Good injury, though. That's good. Duke move is pretty solid. Change of direction is solid. He's got good short route running. His catching is actually pretty balanced. Wow. So it's, it's his release that's really hindering him. That is not bad at all. And we had one more Marcus Camp as a 64. That's, that's actually a really impressive find for the CPU. I can't believe there was a 6'6 receiver and I didn't notice him. That's the worst part. I didn't even notice this guy. 6'6". He's got 56 awareness. And then, of course, we will take a look at the rest of the draft and see where we messed up. So, Amari Moore... Oh, look at Daniel Perkins. Daniel Perkins, the quarter, the receiver that the Panthers drafted, is an 82 overall. Hidden development, 6'5", 222. 97 spectacular catch. All right, well... Panthers are going to be a load of fun. Um, Alex Cummings, top corner taken at number two overall. He's an 80 overall. So was Amari Moore. So two 80 overalls at corner. Austin Josephson was a 77. Ooh, Melvin Battle, the Cardinals did not make a good choice there. I mean, not, not that they didn't need that, but East getting a 72 overall out of that. And that's a, a top, well, six pick, six overall pick right outside of the top five. Um, let's see. Where was... No shot. Dominic Alexander is an 83 overall. This was the safety. If you guys remember, this is obviously a while ago now, considering all the craziness that I've had to deal with with my PC. But Dominic Alexander was the safety. And I'm like, I want this guy. And this was like mid-season. 95 speed on a safety. 86 zone straight out of the box. And he's got 96 injury but with the plus three that the Jets obviously offer him. Wow. Well, they got themselves a pretty damn good safety, didn't they? Sean Haynes was the worst one as a 75 in the in the first part of the draft. Trent Molden a 73. Matt Cunningham was a 76. Cornell Skinner, 74. I'm trying now to see where the guys were. Okay, so Quintana was a 75. He's also hidden development. Okay, and 86 strength, 83 power moves. That's really good power moves coming in. So that was a would have been a good pick, but he just was outside of our target range. And then Greg Hendricks ends up being a 74. So now the Chiefs have a quarterback that they don't need. Um, Drew Barker ended up being a 77. So Keelan Jackson was the best guard then because Barker was the, was the other first round grade. Um... Martin Hicks, 76. Trying to see where Chad Loud ended up being a 74. Ezekiel Jones, a 73. Where was the guy that Gerard Greer ended up being a 73? That's the center that I had on my board. There's us again. And then Calvin Castle ended up being a 74. And he's normal. So we sort of dodged a bullet then, essentially, by getting um, Deion Jones. He does have a much better power moves, though, and I think his block shedding is better. So overall, not a bad, not a bad player, regardless. Injury is better too, and toughness. So maybe it. I guess I'll, I'll count that as a wash. I mean, it might end up being a bad play for us, considering if um, if Deion Jones ends up being, you know, injury prone or something like that. All right. So after the draft is done, this is what the team is going to look like going into our next season. Not a whole lot's changed on the offense aside from we now have Patterson back at center. I move Jackson over to right guard, and now Malk will stay where he was has been. And Patterson can once and still have the starting role just at center where he was drafted for. And then on defense, 
really not much has changed at all because Deion Jones is going to be a backup. Odegizua is going to be the guy that is the starter. Um, and then we have, you know, of course, we have Will Jones here who's going to be our number four to start out. And we'll see how things go. And yeah, so not a lot of changes. You know, it wasn't a huge offseason because we have a really good nucleus right now. We have some interesting things going on for preseason because we now have a 6'6 freak of an athlete wide receiver that can't play the position of wide receiver very well, <laughs> but he's good at everything else. So that should be interesting. But as for this video, that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, again, let me know down below, guys. What are y'all thoughts about college football just going straight into it hardcore? Um, I will I will do my best to remember this this franchise and to get some videos out from time to time. But I mean, I, I got to be honest with you guys. I mean, with the hype that college football has, the potential that it has for just a lot of really fun and interesting content. And then on top of that, too, like I just to be very frank with you guys, I have to think about the channel, too, and like what it can do for my channel. I really want to try and, and capitalize on that as well. So I'm going to do my best to, to balance things out, but just letting you know, like it's going to be a lot of college football, at least for the start. I don't know if it's going to stay that way. I, I don't know. I might not like the game that much. I don't know. I doubt it, but it, it's always a possibility. So let me know what you guys' thoughts are about all that down below. Before you head out, hit that like button, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that bell notification, and I will see you guys next time.